Now, in this video, we're going to look at the two comparison tests, and these are our last two tests that we have for series in a typical calculus course, the limit comparison and the direct comparison. Now, the direct comparison is sensible, but sometimes it, I find it can be difficult to work with because you have to be very careful about how your series that you're comparing differ from each other. Um, the adding and subtracting of in the numerator or the denominator is going to be different whether you're converging or diverging. And so it, it can be a little bit tricky to use. The limit comparison is a little bit easier to apply, and that's why we're going to talk about it first. So again, we have a series, an infinite series. We want to compare it to a series which is simpler and typically one whose behavior we can determine directly from another test. A typical example is going to be a P-series test um, or potentially a geometric series test. Those are the ones that are sort of easiest to do as comparisons in both of these tests. Um, they have to behave similarly to each other. That's the power of how these work. So what I want to be able to do is I want to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the ratio of terms in the two different series. And as long as I get a finite value, so something that's not infinity and not zero, um, then I can say that the two uh, series will converge or diverge together. If, um, if they, if my comparison series, my, my B sub N, if that converges, then I will be able to say that A sub N converges. Um, if B sub N diverges, then A sub N will also diverge. If I get zero or infinity, that means it is not a good comparison and the, the test will not work. And so I either need to choose a different series to do the comparison with, or I need to choose a different test altogether. But this limit, it again, we're trying to talk about how they behave similarly to each other. And so if they're going to zero, that means that B sub n and A sub n are behaving very differently. B sub n is bigger than A sub n by a lot. And if it goes to infinity, then I'm saying A sub n differs from B sub n by a lot. And so Either, again, the comparison is not good. If the comparison gives me a finite value, that essentially means that the two ratio, the two series are behaving similarly to each other, give or take a scalar. So let's look at some examples. Um, if two series, uh, you need to do the same thing. Uh, if you pick series which um, give you zero or infinity, the test is inconclusive, you have to do something different. Um, again, do not confuse this with the ratio test. Getting one with the limit comparison test is perfectly fine. It is conclusive. Getting one with the ratio test is inconclusive. Zero and infinity are the, the, val the values that are bad here. Um, and, and the other thing to kind of keep in mind is that the order that you divide these in actually doesn't matter. Um, if you get a zero with a n over b n, you'll get infinity with b n over a n. And if you get zero with a n over b n, you will get infinity with the other way around. So they're both going to tell you the same thing, regardless of the order that you do the division in. Um, it's typical to do a n on top and b n second, but it really doesn't make any difference. Um, if as long as you get a if you get a fraction instead of an integer, I mean whatever, they still that's the this this test is still telling you that they behave similarly. Um, okay, and let's look at some examples. Um, if one of your series is alternating, um, maybe this isn't the best test, but you can still compare it to another series by doing the absolute value. There may be cases where you want to determine absolute versus conditional convergence, and then this may be more appropriate than just looking at the alternating series test. 
Okay, so let's look at our series here. Um, four to the n over three to the n plus one. Now this is not a geometric series. It has geometric components in it, but this plus one means that it is not a geometric series. It is not gonna go to the same value if it converged as four to the n over three to the n. But this plus one as n gets really big is not gonna make a lot of difference. And so we're gonna basically drop the constant here and we're gonna say the series that I wanna compare this to is four to the n over three to the n. In the limit comparison, I don't care whether this is converging or diverging. Um, and and I don't have to worry about the sign or the, like, is it adding or subtracting? And then the way that I will in the direct comparison test. Um, because the, the adding or subtracting is going to make a difference if you're converging or diverging. I can worry about what the series is doing after I get a finite value for the limit. So if I take the ratio here, again, it's the original one divided by my comparison one. I can, again, flip and multiply, and then I can do some arithmetic, and I can show that this limit is equal to one. So it's finite. Uh, it's not zero. It's not infinity. And so we know that they behave the same. Now, what does the same mean? In this case, we can use either the geometric series test or the root test to see that this is, the, the multiplier here is four over three. Four over three is bigger than one. If you're using either of these two tests, they will diverge. So that means that my original series will also diverge. When you are doing comparison tests, you need to actually state more than one thing. You're not just saying is this converges by the geometric series test because R is equal to one. In the comparison test, you have to say which comparison test you're using, what series you're comparing it to, how you know that the comparison series converges or diverges. So which test did you use to do that analysis? And then after you find your limit, then say your conclusion for the comparison is that they do or don't behave together. So you have to expel out like your reasoning when you do these problems. Uh, and often um, that is the part that students will forget is they will just say, oh, I use the limit comparison, but they won't actually say like what the series was that they used to do the comparison or they will say um, that they, um, um, I lost my train of thought. Um, or they will just they will just sort of assert that it converges or diverges and not actually say like, how do they know that it converges or diverges? So you do wanna just be very clear. Sorry about that. All right, let's look at another example. Now for this one, we have the square root of n minus five and n squared plus one as our, our series term. Now in the limit, we know that these minus fives and these plus ones are not gonna make any difference. And so that's kind of how we figure out what our comparison series is. We're gonna compare it to the square root of n over n squared, which is one over n to the three halves power. Uh, and you can write it in either way. Um, so that you can actually calculate the limit as you go. But uh, you're going to, again, take the ratio of your two comparisons. And when you do the analysis, you do in fact get one. Um, now, where might you not get one? Well, if this was like two N minus five and you compared it to the square root of N instead of the square root of two N, then you would get square root of two as an answer and not one. But again, that scaling factor doesn't matter as long as it's finite. So, okay, so we got one. We know they do the same thing. So the question is, what does our comparison series do? And in this simplified form, n to the three halves, this is clearly a p-series test. And we know that this p is bigger than one and therefore it converges. And because the limit comparison gave us a one, we know that this series also converges. So again, you have to be very clear about 
what series you're comparing it to, how you know what that does, whether it diverges or converges. And then based on that, which comparison test are you doing and how do you know that it converges or diverges? It, it does take a little bit more explanation because there's more going on. Now with the direct comparison, um, basically the idea behind the direct comparison is very straightforward. You're gonna set up an inequality. If the if you know that this comparison series converges and you know that this one that you're trying to understand um, is smaller than your comparison series all the time, less than or equal to, then if this one converges, then so will this one. That makes sense. If you're converging, uh, if you're looking at a diverging series, then you want to choose a series that is smaller than this one. And therefore, if this one diverges, then so will this bigger one. Now that seems clear and obvious, but it becomes much more difficult to apply um, when you start dealing with pluses and minuses because if the pluses are in the denominator, it actually makes the fraction smaller. And if the pluses are in the numerator, it makes it bigger. And same thing for the negatives. And so you have to be very, very careful about these inequalities that you're setting up because if your BN is bigger than AN and it diverges, that doesn't tell you anything. Um, and so this is one of the reasons why the uh, limit comparison is a little bit easier to work with. So let's look at this series. Now this one, the sign N is going to wibble around between negative one and one. So we know that if we compare this to one over N squared, every term in this expression will be less than one over n squared since the largest sign n can be is one. And then we can set up our comparison. Um, sign n squared plus one, that bigger denominator is going to make the whole fraction smaller. And therefore we can actually do the comparison directly. And we can say that since this one is smaller than this one in all cases. We know that since this one converges by the P-series test, then this one will also converge by direct comparison because it is less than whatever this is. Now, in if this minus one is in the denominator, then I actually don't have the right relationship to test for convergence with the direct comparison test. Because the denominator is smaller, this will this fraction will actually be bigger. If this was diverging, this would be what I would want. But this is this is a converging series, and therefore I can't use the direct comparison for this problem. I should use the the limit comparison to do this one. And that is one of the reasons why the limit comparison I I like it better because it it's not sensitive to whether you're doing n squared plus one or n squared minus one, whereas the direct comparison really, really is very sensitive to that. Now, if we look at the series n squared plus one over n cubed, this, if we simplify leading terms, we get the harmonic series, which is divergent. And so I can make it bigger. So n squared plus one that plus one makes the numerator a little bit bigger and therefore makes the whole fraction a little bit bigger. And so therefore that's the right relationship. I know one over N diverges and therefore this one that's bigger must also diverge. You know, Think of it as a diverging series kind of pushing this bigger one off ahead of it to infinity. Um, and then again, we have similar uh, contrast problem if we are um, subtracting in the denominator that makes the denominator smaller and therefore the fraction bigger if we're subtracting in the numerator that makes the numerator smaller and so in this case we would need a different test in this problem because we're not actually sure when we reduce this to one over n whether this is going to be bigger or smaller but this minus one makes me think that it might be smaller 
And so it may might converge by the limit comparison. Uh, it might behave similarly as one over n in the limit comparison, but this does not meet our requirement for our any strict inequality. And therefore we can't actually use the, the direct comparison test. Uh, I find that the direct comparison test is most useful for things that aren't going to be amenable to a lot of the other problems. Um, things where you have weird log expressions and you're trying to compare them maybe to power series. Um, they don't really work well in the ratio test, for instance, but they might work in the direct comparison test. If you could find a power that is going to be more or less than the log, you may be able to um, apply the direct comparison in some of these weird freaky cases where some of these other sort of more common tests don't really work. Uh, some textbook authors really like the log problems and some don't. And so it just depends on your textbook as to whether or not you're actually going to encounter a place where the direct comparison test must be used because even the limit comparison doesn't really quite work.